The key issue in breeding is the ability to select the best animals as parents of the next generation. But what information can be used to determine which animals are the best ones? In this lecture, we will be focusing on that question. Several different information sources can be used for selection. As we will discuss during this lecture, the main sources are phenotypes, pedigree and DNA information. The simplest method of selection is so-called phenotypic selection. This strategy simply ranks the individuals based on their phenotypic performance and selects the individuals with the highest performance. Common phenotypes used for selection are for instance milk yield in dairy cattle and body weight in pigs. Body weight can easily be measured for each animal, while milk yield can only be observed in females. Therefore, in traditional dairy cattle breeding, bulls were selected based on observed milk yield of their daughters. For several other traits, phenotypes are not measured on the selection candidate themselves, but on their close relatives. One example are carcass traits and pigs that require that an animal is slaughtered. Once an animal is slaughtered, you cannot use it for breeding purposes anymore. Therefore, carcass traits and pigs are sometimes measured on full sips of the selection candidates. An alternative to measuring traits on the carcass is measuring an indicator trait that is related to the trait of interest and can be measured on live animals. For instance, a typical indicator trait for the content of lean meat content in selection candidates and pigs is back fat. Back fat can easily be measured with an ultrasound device that yields a cheap and easy to measure indicator trait. Some traits are, repeat, are recorded repeatedly. Repeated records on the same individual may have different values. The extent to which repeated records on the same animals are similar is measured by the repeatability. The repeatability ranges from 0 to 1 where a value of 1 indicates that repeated records have identical values, and therefore obtaining a single record per individual is sufficient. For traits with a low repeatability, however, multiple repeated records are required to obtain accurate phenotypes. Recorded phenotypes are only partly affected by genetics, and actually mostly by the environment. To get a better handle on which part of the phenotype is due to genetics, and can be transmitted to the next generation, requires that the pedigree of animals is known. Building a full pedigree for a population requires that for each individual, its sire and dam are known. With this information, all family links between individuals and a population can be traced. Both phenotypes and pedigree records may contain some errors. It is important that in phenotype and pedigree recording, unique IDs are used such that linking different sources of data does not introduce errors. Pedigree errors may be caused by mixing up parents or semen at mating, unnoticed matings, mixing up of young animals shortly after birth, or administrative mistakes. From experiences in parentage testing, it is known that up to 10% or sometimes even more of the animals may have an incorrect pedigree. Checking the pedigree for errors can be done using DNA information. This brings us to the last category of information source used in selection. Common ways to collect DNA information are blood, hair roots and mouth or nose swabs. Obtained DNA information can be used to check pedigree data, but can also be used to replace pedigree data. In that case, relationships between individuals are computed from DNA information rather than from pedigree information. This brings us to the end of this lecture. Let's briefly summarize the main messages. Information used for selection comprises phenotypes, pedigree and DNA. Phenotypes are needed to define differences in performance between individuals while pedigree or DNA are needed to define relationships between individuals.